What is up everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you guys my top 10 favorite discs from my collection. Let's jump right into it. Stop wasting everybody's time. Let's get after it. The first disc on my list is a Glow PD2 that was dyed by Alex when we first met. This thing's pretty pop top, 175 grams pinned, and the Glow PD2s were a not very overstable run. They were considered like the perfect bomber run for power throwers. I know Simon bagged one for a bit, and I haven't thrown this specific one, but the Glow PD2s that I have thrown uh, have been tended to be on the straighter side, and when you really get them up to speed, they'll drift. Won't quite turn, but if you hammer them flat, they'll just go dead straight, drift right, then have that PD2 fade at the end. My next disc is a Prototype DD3. I remember getting this disc and being super excited for it. And the first time I ever felt the Prototype DD3 was 2021 PDGA Worlds in Ogden, Utah. Eagle and Simon both had boxes and they had some boxes of uh, PDs and DD3s and I believe an MD3 in there as well. And uh, I really thought that I was going to have to be putting with Shoguns or driving with Majesties in our uh, active lineup or even my distance driver was going to be an Enigma at the time. But that's when uh, Dismania announced they were going to be uh, separating from Innova and uh, going to start manufacturing their own discs. So for me, the Prototype DD3 definitely has a special memory for me because like it was... It was the start of something new and it was really cool to see the behind the scenes of how Eagle and Simon played their role in the marketing side of Discmania. It was right during Worlds and uh, we launched a video on YouTube and Simon and Eagle both went live and they watched that, uh, they did like a live reaction to the, the video that Discmania put out. So it was myself, Avery Jenkins, Eagle was there. I believe Steve Brinster was there and then Avery. But yeah, that was the five in the Airbnb in Ogden, Utah. Super cool. Um, but yeah, that's why the Proto DD3 is one of my favorite discs in my collection. And that leads me to my next favorite disc, an Avery Jenkins two-line Star Destroyer. Pop top, 167 grams. I met Avery in 2009, and this happens to be his 2009 World Champion Star Shorter, and he signed this and gave it to me when I first started playing disc golf. He did not have to give me this disc, and looking back, that was very, it was very nice of him to give up a disc like this to me. He, he thought it would be for my, my arm speed, since it's lighter weight, but this thing is actually pretty overstable. But when you get up on it, it is a bummer. I haven't thrown it in a few years. Um, but yeah, shout out to Avery Jenkins, two line destroyer. And yeah, one of my favorite discs in my collection for sure. Next disc is actually from a tournament in 2009. And it is the first disc golf event I ever got to spectate. And it was the 2009 Green Country Open, a national tour event that happened in Pahuska, Oklahoma. So there's signatures on here of Avery Jenkins, Eric McCabe. I'm not sure who this guy is, but I know he's associated with the Twisted Flyer Club. We got Nate Doss, Leslie Brinster, Barry Schultz, Steve Brinster. We have Nico LaCastro right here, David Feldberg, and Ken Climo. Definitely one of my favorite discs and it is a star groove, believe it or not. I'm not sure exactly when the groove came out. I assume this is probably an early run of the end of a groove, but I'm not totally sure. But yeah, this one's just sentimental to me because I got to meet all these people and I really didn't know who they were at the time. I was 10 years old at the time and honestly, uh, kind of starstruck at the moment, but I didn't really understand the significance of a national tour event coming to a town of 3,500 people. But looking back, probably one of the reasons why I'm involved in the disc golf community today. I felt welcomed, everybody was super nice to me, and I believe Nate Doss ended up winning this tournament. I could be wrong, maybe Alex can pull it up and 
put it right here where the winner was. Alrighty, my next disc is a Metal Flake MD3 made by Discmania. So, it's not super rare by no means, but I personally really like the stamp on it. This is a USA Wrestling logo, and I, being a wrestler for 13 years, I honestly did not like it that much in school. But looking back, like it's the only sport that I missed because I spent so much time and dedication to the wrestling room, in the wrestling room, and just wrestling in general. You practice for hours and hours and hours just for a six minute match. Like it's grueling, it teaches discipline, and if uh, you have kids or if you're a kid watching this and you're thinking about wrestling, definitely a sport I would recommend. You may not be good at it, but you will get more life lessons out of it than any other sport that is out there. But yeah, shout out to Elliot DeLong with the long dies for dyeing this uh, Metal Flake MD3 for me and making it sentimental to me. Next is a disc that I handpicked from the Discmania warehouse in 2021. And this is an Exosoft Tactic. And it's got a ton of stamps on it and it's a test disc. So what they do is they test the stamper and they they kind of use this as a disc to make sure uh, the stamp machine's working correctly and the temperature on the heating plate is making the foil stick to the base plastic. So this was a test disc and it's got a bunch of eagles on the bottom side. I think four or five stamps on top. It was just a disc I handpicked and I thought was really cool. And I, I, that's why I like this Exo Hard Tactic. I just think it looks cool. Next one is probably probably one of the most sentimental discs to me and this is a pin swirly s-line pd2 and the story behind this disc is that jaime miro at the Discmania warehouse gave this to me and it is technically the first gift that i received from Discmania. the first time i went up there was in 2019 to try out for the Discmania disc golf combine and knowing Avery Jenkins on a personal level, I was able to access the warehouse and make some friends inside the Discmania warehouse. And Jaime was gracious enough to hook me up with this very swirly um, S-Line PD2. Never been thrown, will probably never throw it just because it kind of, it's special to me. It's the first disc I ever received from Discmania and Jaime at the warehouse. So, thank you Jaime, thank you Discmania for this disc. It's usually on my wall at the office, but brought it out just to show you guys. Next up, another disc I handpicked from the warehouse. This one probably in 2021, after I'd been on the team for a year or a year and a half. And this is a Team Stamp Crowned Eagle Run Color Glow MD3 board flat and this run of md3 is dead straight um i just this thing still glows it's still got its color to it it's kept in a box don't plan on it throwing it anytime soon but yeah team stamped uh crowned eagle run color glow md3 all righty second to last disc disc number nine a Doombird 2 given to me by Simon. Funny story behind this disc is Simon actually threw my team stamped C-Line FD3 into the water on hole 16 and in Ogden, Utah at the fort. He said, you got something overstable? And I said, I got an FD3. He said, perfect. He throws the big hyzer over the tree and it seriously goes 50 feet into the water behind. And it's the island hole where uh, James Conrad beat Paul McBeth uh, in the playoff and uh, where Ezra Aderhold threw the forehand and it hit the basket and rolled OB. So that's the hole and this was Simon's way of making it up to me. So he gave me a doom bird too. So shout out Simon. Thank you for always being nice to me. Um, treat me as a friend. Uh, very much appreciate you. And if you do, everybody knows who Simon is. Go check him out. Go subscribe to him. Go follow him. And yeah, just an overall great human being. And lastly, my favorite disc. Another disc that Simon gave me. 
This is his uh, quadruple stamped MD5. So Paul Macbeth has thrown this disc, Simon Lazat has thrown this disc, and I'm sure many other top tier pros have thrown this disc. Uh, one of my favorites just because of the story behind it. He came down from DDO with Casey White and they played around with me and Avery Jenkins and that was the first time I was on Simon's vlog. And um, first time I ever met Simon. And I already knew that Casey was going to be presented with a contract going into the round. So I was already excited. And it, it made for a great day. And on hole 12 at Moccasin Creek, Simon unloaded his back because he kept hitting this big tall tree uh, on the right side of the fairway. And he lost like five discs right before DDO just to come hang out with us. And once I found his disc, I said, hey, do you, do you want your disc back? And he said, nah, keep it. And word had gotten around that I had his disc and I had several people message me saying, hey, it's not right for you to keep that disc. That's Simon's disc. And I'm like, I know, I'm trying to get it back to him. But Simon ultimately said I could keep it. So yeah, gonna keep it. I doubt I will ever sell it or throw it unless the price is right. So to me, it has a lot of sentimental value. That's the day Casey White decided he was going to be on Team Dismania. First time I got to be on Simon's vlog. First time I ever met Simon. And overall, it was just a great day. A great memory for me. And that is it. The Metal Flake Quadruple Stamp MD5. If you like this video, please feel free to subscribe. And please feel free to like this video. Thank you guys so much for your support. I hope all is well. Happy Holidays. Stay reliant, baby.